Over the years, I've watched countless interviews and mix tutorials from professional mixing engineers to uncover the best tricks they love using in their own mixes to steal for myself. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you some of these amazing mix tricks that I've stolen from pro mixers over the years, including one that will give you the cleanest sound possible for one of the most annoying instruments to get right in a mix. Starting with the solution to a problem I know everyone has faced at one point. Let me know if this sounds familiar to you. You open a session that has multiple mics for an instrument, and it's absolutely amazing when we get multiple audio sources for a track, which gives us more options on how to sculpt the sound in a mix. But there's just one problem. And can you spot it on screen? When trying to balance multiple mics, our ears can be fooled because of the boost in volume as multiple sources hit the same output. This tedious variance in gain can trick our ears into making odd choices when working in isolation. And when we bring it back into the track, there's that nonstop back and forth trying to get the balance rebalanced again. It just eats up time that could be better used on the actual mix. And there's an amazingly simple trick from an incredible producer and mixer who's worked with artists like Lamb of God, Every Time I Die, Four Years Strong, and many, many more. Machine, the producer. Machine's way of getting around this annoying balance issue when mixing in the box is straightforward with the help of Bass Rider. By creating a bus that acts as a balancing bus, Machine will send multiple mic tracks to the balance bus. And with Bass Rider as the first insert, Machine adjusts the threshold so that the fader only moves on the peaks of the instrument. What this little hack does is let Machine create a snare balance without being tricked by loudness. Because Bass Rider is acting as an auto gain rider, keeping everything at zero. I make a sauce, we call it fancy sauce. Mm. For me. I want some fancy sauce. Yeah. Once Machine has his desired balance blend, the output of the snare tracks goes to the assigned bus or stereo output. But there's another instrument in a mix that might not have the same type of multiple mics as a guitar or drums, but can quickly rack up a huge amount of tracks in a session. And because these tracks aren't necessarily laid out exactly one for one on top of each other, it can be a pain in the ass trying to get a nice blend going. Well, that's where Mixer Beau Rochelle has a pretty cool trick using another member of the Ryder family that'll stop you from chasing your tail in circles when trying to get these tracks balanced just right. Bo will sometimes pull out Vocal Rider as a substitute to something like L1 or L2, which is commonly used as a, come on, take a guess, a brick wall limiter. <laughs> That's so funny. Last time I heard that, I laughed so hard I fell off my dinosaur. Stop right now. But what happens when you make any additional fader moves on, say, a vocal stack that is going to a vocal bust that has a limiter? You'll get some more of the limiting sound and sometimes distortion if pushed too far then it's back to trying to rebalance. And before you know it, you're asking yourself why you ever wanted to be a mixer and debate giving up on everything. Well, you won't have to do that because what Bo figured out is by setting the threshold to the right level, Vocal Rider will automatically keep vocal stacks at a zero fader point. And then he'll use Vocal Rider to write automation and then fine tune the automation from there. And remember the part I mentioned about automating a track into a bus and with the limiter and the distortion and all that stuff, et cetera? Well, because Vocal Rider is just reading automation, any changes that you mess with when rebalancing will not be affected and you can avoid all those artifacts or distortions that a limiter may introduce. Another trick that I picked up from one of the most influential mixers of the 21st century gives a similar type of perceived volume trickery in a mix while adding weight to a source, which is really helpful on instruments like guitars and bass. One of Andrew Shep's favorite go-to tricks for thickening up the low end is by using a Helios EQ. And the Helios EQ has a unique design. And with the components that the audio signal hits within its signal path, it'll create a natural musically flavoring resonant bump. Simply by turning the frequency section to 60 Hertz with no additional boost, you'll get a sneaky lift Andrew uses a lot in his mixes. In fact, Andrew over time wanted more control over this, so in his Chef's Omnichannel plugin, there are three options mimicking the similar resonance EQ effect the Helios offers. This next one I've seen mixers like Kurt Blue and Jacob Hansen use, which helps with the problem that when I started out, didn't even know was a problem. Traditionally, when we use a gate, it opens up and allows for the sound to pass through and then closes, basically cutting off that sound. Yeah, John, no duh. But there's one instrument in particular that if you cut off the tail end too soon, it gets a sense of lifelessness in the mix. Toms by nature require sustain to sound full, but by nature, their sustain is often a little too much. I first saw Kurt Ballou put this trick out and then later Jacob Hansen on toms, which helps solve the sustain problem. With Soundtoys Filter Freak, you can set the action gate to turn on after the tom has hit, and it will slowly close the gate and filter out the undesired tom sustain. But toms aren't the only instrument that require a little more love, and this problem is inescapable, like you're in a mixing straitjacket. And it seems to always find you in every mix. 
Remember at the beginning of the video when I said this? Including one that will give you the cleanest sound possible for one of the most annoying instruments to get right in a mix. Well, this trick from the producer and mixer behind bands like Def Leppard and Dream Theater, to name a few, uses to clean up the bleed on one of the worst instruments to clean up bleed from in a mix. The holy or unholy snare, depending on your love-hate relationship with snares that day. Have you ever pulled up a snare track, added your gate, dialed in the settings, and feel good, but as you play the mix, you find some spots the gate is cutting off the snare a little too much. And no matter how you adjust the settings, it just doesn't fit right. So sometimes you're led to make a decision to do the one thing that can set off any audio group forum. You end up pulling up snare samples. Well, Rich Chicky figured out a way around this or minimize it. And this trick really gives more precise control than using a gate. Rich skips a traditional gate and opts for a multiband compressor. A multiband compressor? What the But wait, like always with pros, there is a small twist. The multiband compressor Rich likes to use is the Fat Filters Pro MB because each band has an expansion option. And Pro MB has a frequency isolation sidechain option that will listen to selected areas of the snare track telling the expander when to open up the sound only when the snare hits. And then the expander will quickly close once the snare has decayed. But by nature of using an expander, it sounds more natural, resulting in a more snare crack in body and less bleed from the rest of the kit. That's a bingo. <laughs> and these genius mix tricks are just the tip of the iceberg of what pro mixing engineers have hidden up their sleeves, which is why you'll wanna watch this video right here for some more mix tricks from pro mixers that you'll wanna steal for yourself.